Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Kids Time with Jesus, a program by the Church of Pentecost Children Ministry. Once again, you are all welcome. And welcome to our friends that are watching and our friends that are Zoom in with us. Today is another wonderful day that we are going to continue our lesson on judges. My name is Auntie Golda, and I'm going to let everybody that is Zooming with us introduce themselves. Hi, hi, children. Hi, hi, hi children. Hi, children. Hello. Hello. Amen. Amen. Jesus. Friend, Friend of little, little children. children. Wonderful. As I always say, if you are a child of God and you want to know more about Jesus and you want to be more like Christ, this is the place to be. So gather everyone, your mom and your dad and all your friends, invite them and let it all come to kiss them with Jesus because we have wonderful children that will talk to you about the word of God. All right, so once again, let us introduce ourselves, friends. Hi, my name is Ariel Aquata, and I'm from the Hartford District. Hello, my name is Benedict Ball from the Tifanara District. Hello, my name is Frank from New Jersey District. Hello, my name is Ampa from the New Jersey District. Hello, my name is Declan Afori from Cleveland District. Hi, my name is Declan Afori from Cleveland District. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for zooming in. Once again, you are all welcome. Now, we have been really delving into the Bible and we have been talking about judges. What we just want to know is how come that the children of Israel, especially people, how come sometimes they were so disobedient? And how is it that God tries to bring them back by giving them leaders? but still they disobey. And most importantly, what we can learn from them because we are not trying to be like that. So, so far, can anyone tell us what you have learned about these judges, any of them? We'll start from Benedict. Again, what I learned is one very powerful judge meeting only use like a few men from the army whom that God had sifted through to men. And he chose about, I'm not sure, exactly sure. I have to go Three, into it. 300. <laughs> yeah, 300 men. Mm -hmm. He chose 300 men and sifted through. Gideon thought he would need a lot of men. So he got to go, take him to like the riverside. And he chose the ones who actually bring up the water by sifting it through their hands. I'm like, that's just common sense right there. <laughs> So mm -hmm. he had a few hundred men and he was, he wasn't really that fearful, but once God told him the plan of quote unquote illusion, how he would make it like that, um, do you have pots and like the fire, the torches and stuff, and you crack the pots to make it like the loud sounds so that they would be scared because God sent, as they say, confusion around your enemies. Exactly. So that's when they thought, and they started killing themselves. That's why exactly. I really like it. Wonderful. God can choose confusion in your enemies and he can use you no matter how small, right? That was uh, from Gideon. I saw Darren hand was up. Yes, go ahead, Darren. I wanted to say that like um, Gideon, what I've learned is that whenever God chooses us, we shouldn't think twice about it. Because mm. Gideon waited for three tests. And uh, he was an angel was coming to speak to him. So I don't understand how you see an angel, but you don't realize it's an angel. A. Eh? And then after you realize that the person is an angel, the God tells you, go and fight the um, the Midianite. You realize that yes, he parted the Red Sea. Yes, he brought snakes, he killed every firstborn male. You realize all of this, you know all of these have happened. Yet you say, please, God, how do I know you are the one who chose me? Mm, yes, so you are. God chooses you, you should always be prepared. That is why Gideon, Gideon was so afraid that when God chose him, he, he didn't even trust himself. The almighty God has chosen you. He chose you. 
and then you don't trust, trust yourself, I've learned that you should also always be prepared. That way you always be able to trust yourself. Wonderful. That is such a most important point because you have to trust yourself. Why? Because you know that you have what? A powerful God. Gideon, uh, um, he wasn't kind of sure of himself, right? Even after all the miracles and everything. Now, does that sound like us sometimes? God does so many things for us. But then when he's asking something from us, sometimes we think it's so difficult, right? And we don't trust ourselves. Who else hand was up about what he had learned from? Some of these are judges. Let's do about two more and then we would. All right, Declan. Um, we also learned about um, Deborah and Barak. Um, mm -hmm. I learned in, those, in that story that you see, when many God can use anyone to help any to help any person. So that means so like the Deborah, he used Deborah, a prophet, to um, to bring Barak and uh, yeah, he used Deborah to to defeat the Sahara the Sahara army. Sarah, yeah, the Sahara army. Yes, yes, you so got that it. Is what happened? So when God, so when God uses one person, He uses it with full hundred percent sure. So that is what I learned. Wonderful. Any more? Any more? And then we'll go into a, all right, Frank. Oh, is it Ampa? Ampa, go ahead. Uh, so what I learned that uh, God, if you have faith in God, God will help you like overcome your troubles. Like when Gideon uh, was about to battle the uh, or God told him that he should not worry and uh, he confused the enemy. So Gideon had a chance to win, even though his army was like 300 and the, uh, the enemy will have more army than you. So if you have faith in God, God can help you. God can help you. If you have faith in God, God can help you. Wow, so many things we are learning, right? From the book of Judges, we learn about faith. We learn about strength, right? We learn about confidence, right? All these things we can learn from the book of Judges. Now, Daron, you get the last one and then we'll go into our lesson. Okay, I just realized something that even when Gideon saw all the miracles and he believed that yes, God had chosen me. When God said, Go and fight the, the Midianites, he was still there was still some well, mistrust and unconfidence in him. Mm -hmm. So God said that is but if you are afraid, then go into the Midianite camp with your servant, and then you'd find what they were saying. That me and you think that yes, I've seen an angel of the Lord, he's done all these miracles. I believe God has chosen me, but mm -hmm. I'm still going to check. You mm. see, so there was still that form of mistrust. So sometimes when God chooses us, even when we are in the middle of doing our job, we can still have mistrust. So we should be careful and not fall down. That way we'll always be able to not have mistrust and we'll always go and do God's will. Wonderful. If another, way, another way, then Gideon wouldn't have ended well. Wonderful. We should always trust in God, right? We should not be second guessing. All right, friends, today we have another lesson that we want to learn from the book of Judges. So today's lesson on the book of Judges is actually um, about a very strong man who just did not have self-control. And so let's see what we as children of God can learn from that. So today, we are from the book of Judges still, and we are going to talk about Samson. Samson, dedicated to God. Samson, dedicated to God. And we will see that God uses people for his glory and also for our own good. So as we go through the story, let us keep in mind how God can use us also for his glory. So our topic one more time is Samson dedicated to God. So let us have Ariel read to all of us our memory verse for the week. And children, as you all know, it is so important that we learn our memory verses and we meditate on it for that week. So let us have Ariel read our memory verse. Go ahead, Ariel. So just chapter 13. Before you, 
give birth to a son, and no razor shall touch his head, because he will be a Nazarite dedicated to God from the way. Amen. 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 Can you read it one more time? Judges chapter 13, verse 15. For behold, you will conceive and give birth to a son, and no razor shall touch his head, because he will be a Nazarite dedicated to God from the womb. Okay, Amen. what a good job, Ariel. Thank you so much. What are some of the things that stick out of you when you read this memory verse? It says, behold, you will conceive and give birth to a son, and no razor shall touch his head, because he's a Nazarite, dedicated to God from the womb. Anything sticks out of you, anyone? Yes, Ariel. And no reason shall touch his head because he will be a Nazarite dedicated from God to the womb. Nazarite, okay. He will be a Nazarite. Anything else, Benedict? Go ahead. No razor shall touch his head. No razor shall touch his head. So what are we seeing about this baby right here, this son? It's a really special one, right? Yeah, Benedict, go ahead. Oh, uh, one thing he's just gonna have very long hair and lots of bad hair days. Exactly. Exactly. That's another way of looking at it. He's no, I don't really think it was that bad. The hair thing was bad because he didn't live long anyway. That's he's another like, thing. Died. Mm -hmm. yeah, it wasn't mm -hmm. so that bad. Mm -hmm. He lived a hundred and something, then yes. Then that would have been, a, <laughs> but don't you think he would he would have to take care of it though, right? Yeah, he would have to take care of it because I think see, I think he did. You know, when you watch most movies, someone mm -hmm. has his hair braided in seven. Right. Years. I think I don't know if it's in the Bible, but I, I don't think he I've tried. It. Yeah, we can assume that he tried. Right. Yeah, he tried to I, take care of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think when he was fighting the thousand Philistines, he had time to, you know, worry. No, wait, my hair. I forgot to brush <laughs> it. Yeah. Exactly. All right. So now let's um, keep these three things in our mind, right? No razors shall touch his head. Okay. He's a Nazarite, right? And he is dedicated to God right from the womb. Okay. Keep that in mind. Because at the end of the day, you will realize, children of God, that the same thing applies to you, okay? So that you will not take your life for granted. You will be very careful because you are also what? Dedicated to God right from the womb. All right. So please, let us continue with our scripture readings as we led. Um, Ariel is the one reading the first one, right? Area, please go ahead and read Judges 13, 1 to 13, and let us follow with our Bibles, okay? Judges chapter 13, verse 1 to 13. Again, the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord, so the Lord delivered them into the hands of the Philistines for 40 years. A certain man of Zorah named um, Manoah from the clan of the Danites had a wife who was childless, unable to give birth. The angel of the Lord appeared to her and said, you are barren and childless. You are going, but you are going to become pregnant and give birth to a son. Now see to it that you drink no wine or any other fermented drink and that you do not eat anything unclean. You will become pregnant and have a son who is, had, is never to be touched by a razor because the boy is going to be a Nazareth, dedicated to God from the womb. He will take the lead in delivering Israel from the hands um, of the Philistines. Then the woman um, went to her husband and told him, a man of God came to me. He looks like an angel of God, very awesome. I didn't ask him where he came from and he didn't tell me his name. But he said to me, you will become pregnant and have a son. Now then drink no wine or any fermented drink or any other fermented drink and do not eat anything unclean because the boy will become a Nazarite of God from the womb until the day of his death. Then Manoah prayed to the, uh, prayed to the Lord, pardon your servant, Lord. I beg, I beg you to let the man of God you sent to us come again to teach us how to bring up the boy who is uh, to be born. God heard Manoah and the angel of the Lord came again to the woman while she was out in the field, but her husband Manoah was not with her. The woman hurried to tell her uh, her husband, he's here, the man, appeared to, uh, the man who appeared to me the other day. Manoah got up and followed his wife. When he came to the man, he said, Are you the man that talked to my wife? 
I am, he said. So Manoah asked him, "Are you? Uh, so when your fills, when your words are fulfilled, what is uh, to be the rule that governs the boy's life and work?" The angel of the Lord appeared and answered, "Your wife must do all the things that I have told her. She must not uh, eat anything that comes from grapevine, nor drink or any wine, nor drink any wine or other fermented drink, nor eat anything unclean." Amen. Amen. Great reading. Thank you so much. Let's continue with our next reading. Judges 13, 4 to 8. Judges 13, 16, 4 to 8. Judges 16, verse 15 to 21. It says, Then she said to him, How can you say, I love you when you won't confide in me? This is the third time you have made a fool of me and having told me the secret of your great strength. With such nagging, she prodded him day after day until he was sick to death of it. So he told her everything. No razor have ever been used on my hair, he said, because I have been a Nazarite. 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 Nazarite dedicated to God for my mother womb. If my head were shaved, my strength would leave me, and I'll become weak as, as any other man. Then Delilah saw that he had told her everything. She went to the rulers of the Philistines. Come back once more, he has told me everything. So the rulers of the Philistines returned with the silver in their hand. After putting him to sleep on her lap, she called for someone to shave off the seven braid of his hair, and so began to subdue, subdue him and his strength left him. Then she called, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. He woke, up, he woke from his sleep and thought, I'll go out before and shake myself free. But he did not know that the Lord has left him. The Philistines seized him, gagged it out of his eyes and took, and took him down to Gaza, binded him with bronze shackles. They sent him to grinding grain in the pain, in the prison. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Now, the last reading, Judges 16, 4 to 8. Judges 16, 4 to 8. So go ahead, Benedict. Judges 16, 4 to 8. I'm reading from the NIV version. Some time later, he fell in love with a woman in the valley of Sorat, whose name was Delilah. The rulers of the Philistines went and said, went to her and said, see if you can lure him to show him the secret of his great strength and how it can overpower him. So we may tie him up and subdue him. Each one of, each one of us will give you 1,100 shekels of silver. So Delilah said to Samson, tell me the secret of your great strength and how, we can, how you can be tied up and subdued. Seven, Samson answered her, may I tie me up with seven fresh gold strings Bow strings that have not have not been dried have become as weak as any other man. Eight. Then the rulers of the Philistines brought in seven fresh bow strings that have not been dried and tied him with it. Amen. Amen. Wonderful. Thank you so much, everyone. That was wonderful reading. So here comes our next judge. Samson, Samson, Samson. So um, before we is, go ahead, go ahead. I'm trying to say that yes, what we were guessing about something having you know done something to say was right because when um, Ampa, I think Ampa was reading, he mm -hmm. said that and all the braids of hair, they cut all of Samson's braids of hair. That means that yes, he did something with his hair despite yeah. not a few very long. He took good, <laughs> he took good care of it. Let's talk about Judge Samson. Let's talk about Judge Samson. Yes, Benedict. I just want to say something that really applies to real life. Mm -hmm. As we're getting older, like mm -hmm. we should focus. We mm -hmm. should focus more on God in mm -hmm. school than like girls and like trying to be popular in school. And this even interferes with when you're reading the Bible more, you're going to get to um what is his name? Solomon. Yeah, he was another God used him with wisdom. I always ask people this. If you could have one wish. What would it be? 
Mm. And they always said, I'll be invincible. I'll be strong. I'll be mm. fast. I said, wrong, wrong, wrong. Wisdom. If you That's can right. be wise, you can get all of that. So God gives, um, he, God actually asked him that question and he wanted wisdom. Mm -hmm. So God gave him some of that. And he became super wise. He started building, he built one of the great temples. But that's when he started getting chasing girls and then he started forgetting about God. And that's when nobody wanted his son to be the next king because they, when he started mm -hmm. chasing girls, not all of his wives. Benedict. Hold on. Mm -hmm. Let him land. <laughs> Let him finish in the union. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, Benedict. And then Darren not will come all, in. Not all of his wives believed in God, so they forced him to bow down to ball and all those things, which left in the meantime, God started moving away from him. And that's why you should really not, you should really start focusing and prioritizing. Mm. And if God uses you, stay focused on the mission. There's this anime where they say, like, you don't, mission season, mission, prioritize the mission first. They always say that whenever they go, like, hunting or, like, mm -hmm. protecting their village. They always say, prioritize on the mission. Put everything us aside. So really say, like, if God chooses you someday, which I know he will, in the name of Jesus. That's right. That you should really stay focused and try to get it done as soon as possible. So that blessing may fall like rain. Amen. Amen and amen. Focus on the mission. Darren, let's hear. I'm just a side comment, but I don't think I would have asked for wisdom if I was Solomon. I would have asked for something way better than that, you know, to go what to heaven. What was that? What was that? So what to was that? To, to go to heaven. Oh. Yes, Solomon, you know, well, <laughs> you see, this is what I'll do. I'll ask God. I'll, I, I ask that, please, let me live in Eden. And please do not make the fruit of life be tempted. Please, I don't want to die by a sword. Then, I just then want to live in Eden. Yes, you, you see, you live in a paradise. The Bible says that God planted that garden. God planted it, so <laughs> I would have enjoyed it. I know, I know. We wouldn't. We all have. Oh my goodness, <laughs> Ariel, go ahead. Um, adding what uh, adding to what Benedict was saying, mm -hmm. it's not even just uh, women that you're chasing or. Uh, money or all that stuff um it can be other stuff like for example electronics or food if you're doing so much for them and you're kind of making too much time for it and making god another thing and just kind of pushing him aside god will god will not get closer to you it takes a lot of dedication a lot of time and a lot of patience to get closer to god if you're not doing any of that and putting things first instead of him how do you expect to get salvation and get to heaven before um, time is running out? Wonderful. Oh, my goodness. We have really delved into something very, very, very important as children of God. See, when we were reading our memory verses, what were we saying? Samson is what? Dedicated to God, right? Right from the womb. He's supposed to be a Nazareth. We means set aside, right? Set aside. And you know what the Bible tells us about all of us? It says we are a chosen generation. We are a peculiar people. We are a special people chosen by God himself. You know why? Because we have a covenant with God because of what? Jesus Christ, right? And the same for all of us. Ariel, Benedict, Frank, Ampa, Darren, Declan, James, Esther, all our friends, we are all chosen. We are all dedicated, what, to God. But just as Benedict said, we have to keep our eye on the price. You see, we have to stay focused. Samson had a problem. He had a woman problem. He had self-control issues. He, like, oh my goodness. See, and just let's not be quick and begin to really say, yeah, it's Samson, but it's not me. But just as Ariel said, anything that is taking us away, right, from reading our Bible, from praying, from doing what God wants us to do. Some of us, maybe God wants you to be a doctor. So he wants you to really focus on your studies. And then every time you're doing like that, see, 
but you would think, well, I am not Samson. You kind of are, you know, because you have removed, right, your focus and you are actually focusing on something else. Okay, let's go to Declan and then Benedict will come in. Um, I wanted to tell you, I think that I've already said this comment once, but just to rephrase it, mm -hmm. like, when the devil wants to, uh, yeah, I've already said it, but then the devil no, wants- No, we still have to hear it. That's good. Go ahead. Yes. The devil wants to get three meetings so that he wants this many priorities to destroy mm -hmm. these three meetings. Mm -hmm. But number one, you reading the Bible. Number two, praying and fasting. Then number three. That is all. Praying yeah. and fasting. So that's two, right? The, then the third yeah. one was the fellowship. The yes, fellowship. Samson had, had no problem with the fellowship. Mm -hmm. so he had to. He had to <laughs> Absolutely. He, he actually had too many of them. Yeah. So, Declan, actually, what you said is worth repeating. Very, very important. That's the devil's focus. You see? So, every time that you realize that, Oh my goodness, I'm not really reading my Bible. You know, I'm not really praying. I feel like, you know, when mommy says, let's go to church, I feel like, uh, I don't really want to. Then you really have to check it right there. Where are my priorities, right? Mm -hmm. So all our friends listen to us. Please keep this in mind. You always have to keep the main thing, the main thing. Reading your Bible, praying, and fellowshipping with the people of God. Benedict, go ahead. I just want to say that I feel like I would say before God was before God was become judgmental and always starts, before God starts punishing people, mm -hmm. he always has a leeway. Because if you read, if you read the story of Samson, his mother told him. You should not marry the, one of these Philistines. Instead, exactly. you should marry one of the Israelites. So, exactly. and, she, and she's your mother, too. So, I mean, I don't see why Samson would, like, really, I mean, I'm, I mean, love is love, and I don't really, I mean, <laughs> you don't, get, you don't like, get how he rides. <laughs> you, you don't care. get how <laughs> All right. Darren, did you want to say something about that? Yes. Because I saw you really wanted to say something about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I understand the reason why Samson was actually trying to, you know, marry the woman and the the Philistine. Because mm -hmm. when you read the Bible, when you read like that part of the story, realize that by then Samson had not eaten, well, eaten honey from a dead lion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A thousand people touched that thing, so anything mm -hmm. like that. By then he, you know, started his journey as a good judge and everything. And because of that, the Bible says that God, God was looking for a way to confront, confront the Philistines. So he decided that, well, Samson has this weakness of women. I know it's going to become a huge problem. That ends mm. up killing. But, you know, for one, let me, you know, try something. And because, you know, the parents had already played their part in the Bible. All they had to do is see the angels many times, you know, have conversations mm. with the angel. Then after that, then you have a you have a child mm -hmm. that's that's job for twenty years. Mm -hmm. So because of that, there is something wasn't like by then you know very obedient. But then he was like, yeah, I'm strong, and God gave it to me. Yeah, before I started like, yeah, I'm strong, I can defeat mm -hmm. Philistines. Because mm -hmm. of that, let me take one of the Philistines, you know. Right, and so you so can see pride. Happened. Pride is setting in now, right? Something and he's breaking all the rules. Do you guys realize that he's breaking all the rules, eating unclean things, you know? So he's actually started, and I like what Benedict says. So before God will really punish you, he gives you a leeway, right? So his mom and his dad keeps telling him, This is not good. That is not what God wants for you. That that sound familiar, you know? Because mom tells you, son, God doesn't want you to associate it with his friend. Associate with friends that are what? That know God, that are Christians. And you know what he said? Why, mom? Why? Why? Just like Samson. Because you know what Samson said? I want her. I, this is my, I love her. You know? Same thing mom tells you. I don't want you to do this. You go, mom, no, but I want to. You know? Anytime that we begin to do that, I want to. I want to. I, we need to step back. 
right? And we need to focus. Okay, I'll come to everybody one, but I really want to hear what Frank has to say. Frank, of all yeah. that we are saying, what do you have to say about Samson? So uh, um, what I want to say is I want you to obey your mom because if something have obeyed his mom, something mom told him to not marry the Philistines mm -hmm. girl, and something Mary, well, I'm just going to obey your mom so you don't get in trouble like something did. Yeah, I have a, I have a, uh, an answer. Uh, so my mom was them uh knowledge is So if Samson have think before he act, he could have not get in trouble. Like his mom would tell him first, but he did not think. So you have to think before. I love that. He should have put a lot of thought into it, right? Think before you act. You are a special person. You have been dedicated. No razor has touched your head. You're not supposed to associate with unbelievers. Why don't you think a little bit, right? I love that. Think before you act. All right, Benedict, and then Darren, and then Declan. All right, Benedict, go ahead. I have two things to say. One mm -hmm. is actually to relate to what Frank said. So just yesterday, my mom took me to the store to get some mm -hmm. shoes. And that's when I saw these shoes that I really liked. They're actually at a good price, though. So I chose them. And then my mom said, why don't you size up? Because, like, the socks, the socks are going to take up more space. Mm -hmm. And I said, no, like, always. Like, I didn't think, like, like, Papa said. So when I went home, put the socks on. It was I put the shoes on now. <laughs> so now you have to take it back and get another one. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Is, and what I really didn't like about Samson is how he didn't like put a lot of like research and like he didn't listen to anybody, he didn't consult or talk to really talk to anybody. He was really like on his own. You should really read the Bible more because if because if what I say, I think that God, we should only study God, we should study the mm. devil and how he thinks. And the reason being. And you can win a devil attack, you know exactly what to do. Exactly. So what let's say to this is love, is love for Delilah. I mean, you're supposed to love God. So I don't see that. I, I can see God picking up his heart and piecing it back together. So, like, I feel like you should have really dealt more and, like, talked to really, like, mm -hmm. really let's listen to the mom. Like, obedience is better than sacrifice. Even though obedience is sacrifice, he's sacrificing. He really likes Delilah, though. But I feel like he just should have listened. Because mm. now that he get got changed, his eyes are out. Now he kills himself. He kills everybody. But, but the Bible said, thou shalt not murder. So now he mm. died in his sins. Oh, that's a wonderful, wonderful contribution. Darren, go ahead. I wanted to say that this is a Actually, no, it's not a fun fact. This is a deadly fact. Mm. Something and her killing the same woman she was trying, he was trying to get. Like he actually burnt the woman mm -hmm. and the entire family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now let me ask you a question right there. So you can really be special and you can be dedicated, but you can act really, really not wise. You know why? That's why the Bible says the beginning of wisdom is what? Is the fear of the Lord. Right, the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord, because Samson should have really known that this mighty God has chosen me, and He has given me specific rules, right? Things I should do and things I should not do, and He's telling me these are the things that I want you to do. Pay attention, but see, Samson wasn't careful, and so he was proud. He didn't really think so much. And even though he was chosen by God, like us all, he began to drift. Everything that God told him not to do, he started to do it. And just as Darren was saying, even when the first marriage to the Philistine, he saw all these things that happened to him, it wasn't good. He still went again for Delilah. Talk about somebody that doesn't <laughs> really, really learn at all. Yeah, Declan, Darren. No, let's go to Declan first because I think Declan has been. Oh, I wanted to say what Declan wanted to say. Well, All right, I... let him say it. <laughs> let him say it because he's been itching to speak. Let him speak. All right, go ahead. 
So I wanted to say, uh, what, what, what did you say again? I, I wanted, I forgot what I was going to say, but- No problem, no problem. No problem. Let's go to Darren. <laughs> Let's go to Darren. Uh, like Samson, well, when you read the Bible, Samson also had a friend, and that friend ended up being the one marrying the one that God had planned for him. Mm -hmm. No mm -hmm. bad company corrupts good character because he ended up burning the Philistine Philistine farmlands and his, their entire family. That means that he made it without even what actually he wanted to. That was some plan. That wasn't a plan. That's why scripture says that bad company corrupts good morals. So we should really be careful of who we hang out with. That's why our man says we should really be careful. So it's coming straight from the Bible. Isn't um, that such a, uh, just a minute. Yeah, Isn't um, that just, just a minute. Uh-huh. Keep, keep, keep what you want to say in mind, Declan, because I'll come back to you pretty soon, okay? Isn't this such um, a wonderful and also a kind of like a warning to us? Really? Like it's a chance for us, right? To learn from Samson, which is wonderful. But it is a warning for us too. Bad company, that's what? Corrupts good character. So friends, you have to really watch the friends that you are hanging out with. Are they the ones that love God? Are they the ones that will spare you on to good works? Are they the ones that would edge you, right? You know, some, some kids can really say very terrible things to others. You know, come, some kids are just bullied. All because they just want to fit in. You know, kids, their friend is doing it. And instead of them to say, listen, this is not cool. I really don't think we should be doing that. They want to join in, to be in company. You know? And that's one thing we should all watch out. As children of God, we should be the ones, right? that would actually influence our friends to do what? Good things. I always tell all my friends, especially my young ones like you guys, that you should always learn Psalm 1 because Psalm 1 is such a very important verse. There, that tells us exactly how we should really lead our lives. Now, I think I'm going to let someone read it for us. Uh, who's gonna read the same one for us? Darren would love to, but you know, Darren would love to. <laughs> Darren, do you have you found same one? Look for yeah, it. I've read it before. My mom said, we, my mom told me and Declan to memorize it, but um, it's awesome. kind of so <laughs> uh, oh, well, yeah. Uh, Ariel, what do you want to say? Oh, yeah, I could read Sam. Uh, oh, you okay, I'm so there, I'm there. Let oh, you are there now. All right, yes. what? Well, what, wait, Declan, are you there too? Yes. Okay. No, no, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> He's in Isaiah chapter 57. So yeah, it's nowhere close. It's nowhere okay. close. So Darren, yeah. you're there. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. So some the some one from the and authorized. All, hold on, guys. Let us all open it, right? And so mm -hmm. follow along. Yeah. So everybody, please try and open Sam one. Darren, go ahead. Sam one from the authorized King James Version. So you mm -hmm. may be very confused. <laughs> and I'm repeating, Psalm 1, <laughs> no from way, the we'll authorized King James Version. Uh -huh. The side titled, The Happiness of the Godly. Blessed mm -hmm. is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Verse two, but his delight, is the law is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he medi medi meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth its fruit in its season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Then the next phase is the misery of the wicked. Mm -hmm. Verse four, the ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Verse five, therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. Then verse six, for the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Psalm one, the verse one to six, 
from the authorized King James Version. Wonderful. Amen and amen. God bless you. So the only person you. who understands this is my mom. <laughs> Actually, if we listen carefully, we would uh, get most of it. Because even the last one, mm -hmm. I remember that it said, the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will do what? He will perish, mm -hmm. you know? But let's just look at the one. I'm going to read mine That's from the NIV, NIV, right? It says, mm -hmm. blessed is the one who do not walk in step with the wicked. You know what that means? If it says you're walking in step with the wicked, it means that you know what is good and somebody is doing the opposite, but you don't say anything. You kind of, you know, follow along, like follow the leader, right? You can't, we should never be like that, right? That's why in our church, you know, our theme says what? We want to be the agent of transformation, right? We, we, the children of God, we want to be the agent of transformation. We want, be, want to be the ones when in our schools, right? In, in our friendships, wherever we go, we know Jesus and we want people to do what? To actually follow us, not the other way around. Okay, so let's go to Declan and then we'll come to Benedict. Mm -hmm. <laughs> say that it's like when, when you follow the crowd when you follow what other people is doing it it's actually you need wisdom to do mm. godly type of wisdom to know what they are doing because and you need, also need power and so how so these three things i like to i like to read, say these three things like you need to to mm -hmm. tell other people to like mm -hmm. to command the courage and you need mm -hmm. the power and you mm -hmm. need also uh, wisdom. wisdom wisdom right so godly type of wisdom so when so that you've courage so that you can tell them that you can have the power to say what you want to say them and they will respect you and but then when you tell them say oh no mm -hmm. no no yes they should respect you and you take the glory mm -mm. No, she is glory with no man. So that one's that's question. right. That's <laughs> right. Amazing, amazing. You should have the power to say no. You should have the power to say no. And all those things is the Holy Ghost that is going to do what that is going to help us, so that we have the courage and the power to say no. This is not okay. I am not going to do this certain things you know i talk to our friends about right look at you that you are chosen you are a holy nation you are dedicated to god and then you are cursing no you know but sometimes we forget ourselves and we're going to talk about the big things that samson did but we also do some of these things you know we don't look at ourselves and we're chosen even the way we speak to people, guys, it has to show people that are what? Dedicated to God. These days, they don't put razor, right, on our heads and say, okay, no razor to touch your head. What it means is that you represent God well. No razor touch your head means that no bad things shall come out of your mouth, right? That you respect yourselves, guys, that you show yourself holy, right? And your friends sometimes will be called you a suffer. Have you guys realized that if they really see the way you are and how you, you know, really conduct yourself, they will say, wow, this is, are you a pastor? Wow, you are special. You know, that's what we're looking for. All right, Benedict, I think I had, I saw your hand up. Yeah. I just want to say, I just want to restate this. Make good friends because not everybody are around you really wants to help you grow and mm. really want the best for you. Some people are actually trying to bring you down and actually are, I would say, very, very selfish and just want to use you for their advantage. Mm -hmm. So I, I forgot who said this. I'm going to say this in two. Poor man will not die more. And my bunny said, oh, Brad, don't hang around bad people. They're the ones who are going to take you down and move you mm. right down the mountain where you just climb. So make sure you're in the good group of people. Bob Rapa, do you understand that? 
Bobra pa Abra live a good life. Ariel, lead a good life. Uh -huh. Okay. All right. Let's go to Darren. Mm -hmm. Um, Benedict, can you repeat what you just said? I didn't hear it the last <laughs> I mean, go I ahead, Benedict. She wants he wants to hear the tree again. Yeah, go ahead. Darren, is, were you going to say something else? Yes, I was, but I forgot. Don't worry. So let's talk about how Samson lost his power. How Samson lost his power. He had already had issues with one Philistine lady already. You would have thought he would have learned from it. Remember, we are talking about the people of Israel. They get into trouble. God delivers them, and then they get into even more trouble, and they get more punishment. Apparently, some of their judges don't even know better. So Samson decides that I'm going to go get another, you know, Philistine lady, even though the mom had told him, these are not the people for us, right? So the first thing that we see here, how Samson lost his power, one of them, wouldn't you say, is disobedience, right? One of them is disobedience. Not really even cherishing the good that God has done for his parents and his parents telling him that this is not the right part for you. So as Christians, let us all discuss how can we let disobedience let us lose our focus as children of God? Some of the things that we disobey so easily, what are some of them? Yeah, Declan. Um, I wanted to say, I wanted to say an example. Mm -hmm. Like you see when you are just studying and you see some destruction, disobedience is that type of just like a destruction that wants you to get out of it, that he wants you to get out totally from your focus. Lose so focus. lose focus, so you lose focus. So you that is what it is. So you depart from God slowly, but then you cannot see it. When you are far away, then mm. you see it. So that is how disobedience lets you, like, let you depart from God. And some ways are like, when you are sinning, when you lie, when, Sinning is rest basically all. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you gradually, that's what, lose your focus and you realize you are drifting from the main mission, right? From your main goal. That's what disobedience does, right? So we are saying all these things so that anytime that we see some of these things, we check ourselves, right? Yeah, Benedict, what, what does disobedience, you know, do to us as children of God. Disobedience gets us into a lot of trouble. Like here's just a small example. We, you have, like when you steal cars, but like if you're driving a car without a license plate, that is very wrong and it's also mm -hmm. illegal. So you could get into big time trouble. That's just one. And also, one thing is, well, I've learned the hard way. The hard way. Don't be disobedient at all. Just try to stay out of trouble because it, most times it's until you've done the action mm -hmm. and you actually get in trouble. When, that's when you actually feel remorse, when it could have mm -hmm. been stopped the moment you even thought thinking about it. So my my idea and my tips to you guys that just, just stay out of trouble and just like, if you see the giraffe fries, just, just turn your head away. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. You know, just stay out of trouble. But it is sometimes so tough, right? I like the analogy of the jollof rice. 
You know how kids love jollof rice? Huh? Do you have an idea? <coughs> Excuse me. And if your mom should tell you, well, you see this jollof rice, don't look at it, don't touch it, don't go, how long? How long can you say, okay, you know, you can for a while, but at a point, you're gonna need the grace of God <laughs> to say, God, okay, help me wait, you know? And it's just like, that's why we have the Holy Ghost, you know? That's why Declan said we need what? Power. We also need what? Wisdom, right? To be able to actually be obedient. Now I see Darren, go ahead. And then Ariel would also come up. I wanted to say that when you look at history, disobedience is really a common thing, like mm -hmm. very, very common. Because one thing is how to disobey is that when you have elders, all every child needs this, like really. When you have elders and then you do not disobey, when you read the book of Peter, when you before the, yes, first Peter five verse seven, mm -hmm. the first part or five five, the first part of it, it says that you mm, we should also obey our elders in every manner. Because when you also read um the story of King Solomon's son. Rehoboam, yes, mm -hmm. yes, Rehoboam. Mm -hmm. Yes, Rehoboam. Him, when before he, the reason why the kingdom, the kingdom of Israel was divided was because when his elders, the people who were like with Solomon and you know had receive a little bit of his wisdom, mm -hmm. you do swallow all these things, you know the tricks. Now it works. The people told him that this is what you say. My father Solomon would help you with what they call tones, but. No, I would I do worse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, the, that's what his friends told him. Mm -hmm. You know, the young people, the ones he's right. growing up with, right. the ones who are used to being rich. And then the, those, the, those were dead. Then the old people, the one who were wise, told him, but I will not do any of this. In fact, we will live and enjoy a time of peace. He went and then also listened to the advice of his friends, and they told him, I'll rip you with scorpions. Mm -hmm. Who would want to follow such a man? He's willing to say this in front of you. This isn't like... I'll do you nicer than the moment I become king. Now, pass, bring out the scorpions. <laughs> this, he said it out loud. That is why only Judah, and that was only because of even David. That was it even because of Solomon. Right, right. So when, if you disobey, it really brings out some colossal circumstances. I mean, this literally changed the whole course of history. Wonderful. That's just a wonderful point. And then it affected his whole generation because he didn't listen to what good counsel. Wonderful. All right, Ariel, and then we'll come to Frank and Amber. My opinion on disobedience yes. can, all right, so disobedience can have a really hard blow onto your life. Disobedience isn't just doing the wrong thing because you accidentally did it. It's someone telling you or you knowing that something is wrong and still doing it um, anyway. I really think that um, actually a lot of people have told me that pain can be one of the most effective ways of getting you to stop something. Mm. But really doing uh, doing things that are wrong and having disobedience in your life can really lead you to some of those things. It could be, I don't know, um, kind of, I don't know how to explain it. Um, doing all these things can lead to really horrible things, kind of like, um, excuse me for saying this, getting a beating or um, mm -hmm. being kind of like talk to um, um, verbally, all that stuff. Right, right, right. And you're right because the, at the end of the day, right, at the end of the day, disobedience does not end well. You know, it does not end well. And God knows how we are, that we have the DNA of Adam and Eve. Right? And that is where it started. And he, knowing that we cannot save ourselves, gave out his only son, right? To be a ransom, to take care of all our sins. And then he set us on the right path. And he's given us the way to go by what? His word. And then he's given us the Holy Spirit too, to be indwelling in us. So that through Bible reading, through prayer, right? Through medica meditation of his word, 
we would be able to not to disobey, right? All these things that we are reading in the Bible is an example for us on what not to do, right? So if um, God is telling you, my son, I need you to have fellowship with me. So the devil doesn't do what? Doesn't deceive you. And you say, well, I think I'm strong enough. You know, like Samson, I'll wait a little bit. I don't think I have to read my Bible today. That's how it starts. Well, I'll read it the next day. You see, you don't set out to actually disobey, but gradually, you know, and then before you realize you're not reading your Bible anymore, before you realize you're not praying anymore, and before you realize you've associated yourself with some friends, and then you're doing things that you know you should want, you should not do. And then, you know, comes the consequences, right? Now you are not too happy because that's not how God made you. Wait, Auntie. You are, yes. So yes. what you just said, like when you're not reading the Bible, you, you say you think you're strong enough. So I'm thinking that you are not strong enough because Satan is uh, like Satan know how to read Bible than you. Mm -hmm. uh, he told Jesus uh, if he was the son of God, he should turn the rock into bread. Mm -hmm. And that was written in the Bible. So I think he know how to read Bible than you. Yes, I totally agree. If you are not reading the Bible, be for sure that you are not strong. You are getting weaker. Yeah, Darren. I wanted to say that, you see, Satan was basically, before he said and tried to take over God's throne and everything, he was meant to be the perfection of God. And if God, the Bible says that in the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and the word was God. Mm -hmm. And if Satan is supposed to be the perfect image of, perfect, basically perfect image of God, then that means that Satan had to know the Bible or else he wouldn't be the perfect image of God, you see. That's how we were supposed to be. Oh, he that, knows, that. yes. <laughs> it's a yes. stronghold. Yes. So That's you know to defeat you. Absolutely. Like, I mean, this is what it says in the Bible. And if if I was Jesus, I probably would have failed because I mean I hadn't fasted for 40 days straight. You see, so that that alone would have brought me on bad tips. <laughs> Benedict, go ahead. I just want to say that like even though you like still feel weak and stuff, you can always pray to God. Because one thing I realized, and I always and I always said it, say this. I'm gonna say it again. God always leaves a leeway for you to always get out of these problems. That's what my, my, one time my friend said, "Hey Ben, you want to play some Roblox, some a little mm -hmm. bit of Minecraft?" That too. I'm like, "Nah, man. We got a test today. We got a test tomorrow. We have to study for mm -hmm. it. So like, I don't fail." I said, okay, so yourself, I said, make sure you're 32, because, like, I'm just trying to watch out for you, and, like, mm -hmm. I don't want you to fail, too. They said, nah, I don't really pay attention in class. I'm not saying that you shouldn't study, and you shouldn't pay attention in class, but sometimes it's good to reflect on reflect on what you learn. So, like, right. it can be, like, put in your brain, like, that's why I always, like, when you want to read the Bible, you pray on it. So, like, you still have that memory and stuff. So when somebody mm -hmm. asks you of it, you're, oh, I prayed to God about this once. And I read the Bible also about this too. Those remind non-devices that you use. Mm. So he went and played. I went to study. So the day of the test, like, I don't get my test results immediately. So a week after she graded the test, I told my friend to see it came after class. And that's when he said, bro, I got, I got to see mm. my test. I'm like, Study, bro. I told you to. That's one. And also, you get for a whole day. You for about like 30 minutes and then for the rest, just study and like just focus. So, really keeping your eye on the mission and trying to keep yourself out of trouble really helps with being disobedient. Like, when somebody is telling you to do something and it's good advice that's actually reasonable, and they're telling you, hey, go jump off that cliff there. Mm -hmm. Or like, hey, it's good, the gun chop. Let's go buy something and boom. If it's reasonable, just do it. Exactly. And don't doubt the person. That is an amazing example. See right there. So you see the difference? 
right there. Choices, they are so important as children of God. Choices, right? And if we go with the word of God, we would never falter. Yeah, Darren. I wanted to say that someone once told me that you see when you're like a Christian and everything and you're suffering hard time, let's say all you have is all you have is homework. Mm -hmm. That's all. But then mm -hmm. and, oh, now you are getting a little bit depressed. So, and you need a real good song. You know how sometimes you sing some songs, they'll just encourage you at this like that. Mm -hmm. Well, let's see, all you know, all you know, are, you know, some other songs be that talks about death. You, you like heavy metal. And all, mm -hmm. it's, all it speaks about is death. Like, you hear this and say, you know what, I should just die. You see, because that's what is in your head. That's the only thing you know. But if you were a Christian, if you're someone who you have all these humans, but you knew a good song that would actually help you in life, and then you sing it, you're like, ah, this could be a very tiring week. And then you start doing your homework, you do all of it, you catch up very soon, you'll be on top of things. So when you are doing, you are studying and things like that, you should really be careful of what you actually listen to, listening. things you watch. Because mm -hmm. if you're not careful to reach the point, you're not, too, you're not going to be too happy with the consequences. Mm. And they are going to be like, where do I start from? Mm. Yeah, Ariel, go ahead. There was another thing that I wanted to add on. When we go to uh, 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 23, it says, For rebellion is like the sin of divination, uh, divination. Mm. arrogance like the evil of adultery. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has rejected you as king. Amen. Oh, wow. Did we all hear that rebellion is like what? Repeat that again. For rebellion is like the sin of divination. Divination is kind of like witchcraft, okay? So what he's saying is that if we rebel like this, we disobey, oh my goodness, it's equating all of us to what? To witchcraft. No witch, witch not, not that is going to heaven. <laughs> so we have to be very, very careful, right? Be very, very careful. And um, I want to come back to something that Benedict said. He said, uh, we are um, almost getting to, you know, the last part of Samson, okay? So I want to get back to um, what Benedict said about God giving us a leeway. Look at disobedience because of that. How people who don't know God begin to treat Samson. What they did to him, you know, mocked him make just put him there and make him like an object of ridicule right guys a child of god right but even in that time when samson realized what he had done and prayed to god for forgiveness you know what samson said what what did samson say can somebody tell us what did samson say to god yeah benedict let me die with the Philistine. Yes. God, give me one more chance. Can I have my strength back? Isn't that kind of sad? Can I have my strength back? And one more time, let me defeat my enemies. And so when he was able to get somebody to put his hands on those strong walls over there, one more time, God gave him one more victory. You know, but one thing I love is that Samson actually repented because he told God, I am sorry, Lord, I have sinned. One more time, use me, right? So there's always a leeway. We don't have to stay in our disobedience. And we have to remember you and I, we are a holy people, a holy nation. We are dedicated to God. We are special people, so we have to watch our steps and focus on what God is expecting of us to do. All that God wants us to do is to lead a righteous life and stay in our purpose so that when it is all said and done, we will all enjoy heaven. Benedict, go ahead. And any, anyone has any last word, I'll come back to you. And then all too soon, we'll come to the end of kids time with Jesus. So Benedict's gone. And like I said, just don't be like 
just being I'm like like how I'm trying to find her words like push it or like because mm-hmm. what I see is Samson he prayed for forgiveness and all and he defeated his enemies or he took himself down with them. Mm. So now that he prayed for forgiveness, I mean if me, I'll ask for my friends, so I'll find a way that I know being blind is not the best thing. So once I would like ask God for forgiveness, so I would be able to get out there and destroy it while I'm outside. Because mm. now this is how I see it. I probably have to do a bit of research on this. So don't take this like real, but now that good wise things, now that I think I already said this, but no, no more thought. Now that <laughs> now that Samson he repented and he asked for a strength back. Now he killed him. He killed the Philistines and himself. Doesn't it mean he dies in his sins? Oh, sins. The Bible he killed himself. So I see that like the Bible says, "Thou shalt not murder." Mm. So he killed Benedict. himself. Now he's dead, so he can't repeat. You know what? Hold that thought. I think somebody wants Darren. Go ahead, sir. Darren, do you have an answer for that? No, I think this is pretty ironic. But mm-hmm. if you read the Bible, it says that if we confess our sins, He's faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Okay, I so with that, hold the, hold that thought. With that, let's answer the question. What do you think? Because Samson asked for forgiveness. What do you guys think? Think no. That's all. No? That he never, like, that he is going to die and go to hell and things like that. I mean, he did die physically, but he begs for forgiveness. He just never takes us as a slow and personal savior. Right. He asked for forgiveness. Right. I think right. yes and no. Yes. Mm, no, that you can only answer one. Yes, yes and no. But then mm-hmm. I think more of... Uh, like there's a sixty percent chance of no. But You're leaning then, towards yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, like yes, because we get he that um, his mom dedicated the child. If it wasn't for that, then hundred percent no. But what? then his mom dedicated the child. That makes about fifteen percent. And also, <laughs> then, it was the actually it was God that dedicated and his mom dedicated the child, and plus the Lord and he used and God used him as a judge, so that covers all of the way. But then no, because look at this. He he first of all told, lied, he lied, he lied a lot of times, which was actually good at that time, but then not so bad. But then also, he told the truth. He told, he told Delilah the truth about his the secret of essay, which so he was not supposed I, to do, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I think that the memory verse. I think that to basically them everything I'm trying to say this is just known as the first Corinthians fifteen thirty three. Mm-hmm. Mark of the Lord's got but um, good moral. So, but you know, Samson's life was very screwed. <laughs> yeah. Happy, yeah. And okay, was, but remember. Remember, remember, the last thing said what? Samson for, asked God for forgiveness. You see, once he asked God for forgiveness and God responded, right, by granting him his wish, what it means is that Samson was right with God, what? Again, all right? Uh, who sounds was up? I think it was Ariel, was that you? Oh, okay. I think it was Benedict. Benedict, go ahead. So, the, so does that forgiveness still cover for like after he killed him, killed himself and the Israelites? Does that still carry over? Oh, that is the thing about God. It says, if we do what we confess our sins, what happens? He's faithful and he's just. To forgive us that that is it that i mean do you guys and do you guys you know um yes yeah you see the moment you ask for forgiveness it ends there and it's such a mystery sometimes it's very hard for us 
as human beings, you know, to really comprehend that all sin, actually, that is it. That is why it's so sad if we refuse Jesus Christ, you know, that's the sin that would never be forgiven. If we refuse to acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, right? If we do not make Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior, then that one we have no chance, you know? But the moment we confess our sins, no matter what it is, and then we make Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior, it doesn't matter. We are right with God. That is how awesome our God is. Yeah, Darren, go ahead. I thought to say that Samson made a huge mistake because out of all his life, it is only written that Samson asked for forgiveness one time. That's true. You live for about 20 years and all your entire life, you never, you know, sacrificed anything to God or anything mm. like that. All you did was ask for forgiveness one time. It's a huge mistake. I was mm. going to be like, how many times did you ask for forgiveness? How many times did you sin? It don't matter. You see, so we should really make sure that we don't sin in the first place. That way, there will be no need for us to ask for forgiveness. Because Jesus was a sinless man. So yes. that's removed one huge part of prayer. Mm. I still don't know how he found 12 hours to continue praying, but mm. he removed a huge part. So friends, this is our lesson today on Samson. And you know, we are not far from being like Samson. We just have to what? Stay focused. Keep good company. Stay in the will of God. And most importantly, all of us, we have been chosen. We have been dedicated to God. We are special people. And we have to live as such so that we would rather be the agents of transformation and not the other way around. So that whatever Benedict is, wherever Darren and Declan are, wherever Frank and Amber, and wherever Ariel is, and all our friends that are watching us, people will watch us and say, Oh, wow, I really want to know this Jesus that. These people know because they are really a peculiar people, you know? So the little, little disobedience, let us pray to God that God will help us through the Holy Spirit so that we will really be in focus. And we are not like the people of Israel, right? They sin, they get punished, it get worse, they are judges, and they go on and on and on and on and on. So friends, thank you so much. We've had a wonderful time. We've learned so much, and we would meet again next Saturday to talk about another important subject that has to do with that. But for now, please remember, always read your Bible, pray every day. And like our friend Declan said, pray for strength, pray for wisdom, pray for courage. God bless you all. So we'll meet you next Saturday. This is Case Time with Jesus saying bye. Guys, let's say bye to everybody. Bye. bye. God bless you. Have bye. a wonderful, 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 wonderful week. That means shower. That's right. Amen. That means shower.